I am not turning it off and I'm not deleting okay, it. Okay, then you're in violation. Okay. Is there a policy that says yes, I can't film in here? Because I've been talking to everybody in here. This conversation is being Okay, are you San Jose State Police? Absolutely. Great. What is your name and badge number? It's right here. Okay. I'll give you my name and number. I'm a journalist. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. And understand the laws about recording in public. What is your name again? You see it right here. You don't know how to say your last name? Covarubias. Okay. I have a YouTube channel. You're going to be on my YouTube. Okay. Thank you. This is Susan Bassey, and if you've been watching this YouTube channel, you know that I started recording the police after I saw Jonathan Silva engage in an excessive force case in this very library at San Jose State University. After an appeal, Jonathan Silva was, fi was fired from his job, but he went to work for the Los Gatos Police because the Court of Appeal said that he had done nothing wrong and the district attorney didn't prosecute him. And this is what the police in that very department are still continuing to do today. You don't know how to say your last name? Okay. I have a YouTube channel. You're going to be on my YouTube. Okay. Thank you. I didn't go to the San Jose State Library that day to talk to the police or even to record them. I went because we were investigating a series of articles about bad cops, bad prosecutors, and bad judges that seems to have disappeared from the Internet. That article was Tainted Trials, Stolen Justice series, and it was written back in 2006, and yet it has disappeared online, and the only place that you can find it is here in this library, and so that's where we went. A, a, lot, of, um, a lot of judges don't like talking to the media. A lot of judges think they shouldn't talk to the media. Uh, there's a, there's a uh, in, in some cases, a real bias or a real inclination against doing that. And what we hope to do is give you some ideas as to why it's a good idea in appropriate and ethically uh, permitted ways uh, for judges to reach out to the media and use uh, the media as a way of educating the public uh, about the way our court system works. And that's what we intend to do, is educate the public about how the court system works. If you've seen this video, you would probably know that Alan Kasanoff was an attorney. He was an attorney whose wife was also an attorney, and this was a video that was taken inside of their home. Through a public records request obtained through the court, we learned that there was a secret bar bench media police committee that was going on for over 30 years. And for these meetings, only a certain number of reporters, prosecutors, private divorce attorneys, and police officers were invited to speak with judges. But more importantly, only a certain number of reporters were. Reporters from the San Jose Mercury and NBC News. By 2000 and 2022, all other media had been excluded from these groups where public officials were meeting in secret and using public funds to pay for the meals of the speakers while judges and lawyers paid for their meals themselves. We don't get to know what was said at those meetings because no records were kept. It took San Jose Mercury News investigative reporter Rick Tolsky three years to investigate the Tainted Trials Stolen Justice series in the Mercury News. It published in 2006, and shortly thereafter, the reporter was taken to the secret meetings being held by the judges, and the title of the talk that they gave him was Tainted Trials or Tainted Journalism with a question mark making them believe that they didn't believe in his series, and sending a very strong message that they didn't approve of his reporting. The job of the free press is to report on the government, and that includes judges. It's not the job of the judges to judge the work of the reporters. And when reporters spend three years investigating police reports, police officers who lie in order to get a conviction, or bad prosecutors, then their work should be trusted more than the opinion of the judges in the Court of Appeal. And what was more interesting was that after all that work and expense, the San Jose Mercury started to make that series disappear. It had been published in newspapers, so it hit driveways all over the area where everybody who would be a juror or voting for judges would probably be reading a copy. And then the series went online, and when it went online, 
you can't find it anymore, except in a few exclusive lawyer manuals and papers that have been published. Well, you probably know, since you're using that. No, that I'm not. He is. And I, this is my first time. I've never used it. So okay. I don't know how to use it. Okay. And we're going to teach interns. how He can show me some of it, but I'm just wondering... Do I need a separate thing from what he has to look at that time period or? Uh, so to look at that time period, yeah. But if you're going older, if you're going pre-85, you can use this here. It's not pre-85 for yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. I'm just telling you it's uh, part of the whole thing. And okay. then if you are looking for 85 and after. Can I get to this remotely? Yeah, yeah. Through your website? Uh-huh. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. E-news. Uh, you got to find Newsbank. That's here. And then you have to... Do you have a library card here? He does. Okay. So you can log in there. Okay. And you get it after 1985. And it will come up just... I can pick the year and just start scrolling it? Uh, you can't scroll. It's like you'd have to search that subject if you were looking for the... So, because it's not going to look like that. Because what happened is in 1985, they started using computers, I guess, to generate the article. Right. So this database reflects just, it's just a database of typed So I'm looking for something that happened in the end of the 90s. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be in there too, probably. In the 85 in one? In the 85 and on, yeah. But okay. it's no, you know, it's no guarantee and it's not like you can just scroll through newspaper pages and look. So. And we probably don't have clippings of that. Mm. It's less likely, yeah. Okay. It's a really big deal. They caught the judges taking Fridays off and golfing, and there's a headline, a front page, and it really made the judges mad, and we're trying to find that. We'd, we've heard about it, you know, mm -hmm. we just were old enough that we haven't heard it. So, okay, I guess we have to look. So so we can look through this remotely yeah, then for the yeah, golfing judges. And with the library card, you can look through, yeah, all the newspaper all the way back. Perfect. Okay, thank you very, very much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. So, so, Steve, you got your library card, right? Yeah. So we can look at it remotely. Did you hear that? We can look for the golfing judges thing remotely. Oh, good. Isn't that exciting? When some of our most important history, especially about our courts, is only contained on microfiche in libraries, and only old reporters and librarians know how to get to that microfiche and that information, we're not being fully informed. And I happened to learn that day how to look things up on the microfiche, and it's not as easy as it looks, and you're going to need a librarian to get started. But I also noticed in the library that they had some old phone books, and those I do know how to use. I couldn't help but notice all the phone books that were lined up by year, because I remember that they used to sell advertising in those phone books, and the sales reps that sold it made quite a bit of money. But they sold advertising to everybody, and that's how everybody competed for business. They would all place an ad in the same phone book that would be delivered to every driveway. And so I decided to pull out the old phone books and start going through some of the history, especially as it relates to lawyers. Fair advertising is what everybody can see. In the old days, it used to be placing an ad in the yellow pages, putting up a billboard, and getting signs on buses, or trying to get your business card put in the county jail if you were a criminal defense attorney. I pulled these phone books during a timeline that lined up when the Bar Bench Media Police Committee was run in San Jose, and it was run off record. And it was also overseen by a judge 
who was a family court judge by the name of Jim Towery, and so I'm looking at the private attorneys who might have benefited from going to those meetings when all of their competitive attorneys and out-of-area attorneys weren't invited. I'm peeking. Criminal RICO standards, even for judges, police officers, and prosecutors, usually go back 10 years and look for certain kinds of activity that was occurring during that time. And I couldn't help but think what it felt like to be a lawyer, a reporter, or a police officer who was never invited to those secret bar bench media police committees. And I thought, what did they talk about? Because we have no record of what was said. Did they talk about food? Did they talk about cases? Did they talk about bad cops, snitches, informants? Or did they talk about how much money they might be able to get out of a divorce case? We don't know unless we go to all the people who would be witnesses to what went on during those secret meetings. Independent, uh -huh. and we're working on the Tina Trials Tarnished Headlines Stolen Justice series, which is all about how there was this secret judge club here for 30 years with the Mercury, so the judges were influencing the headlines. Oh, and, and so we started breaking it. It's a long series, and then we're doing spin-off stories for it. But we needed to find the original Mercury series on that, which was published in 2006. And so we came here to do that. Oh, that's so exciting. Because the only place to get it is in that is room. California? Mm -hmm. So you know that there's a pretty big distinction between the San Jose Public Library and the San Jose University Library. Right? Yes, I do. Okay. I politely answered that question, but I realized there was so much information in that library that it was shocking to me that she didn't think that I knew that I was standing in the library where a San Jose State University police officer had beaten up on somebody who was just simply trying to look for some free seats, because that's what that man was doing there that day, regardless of what you want to say that the police were called for. That's why he was at the library to get some free seats. I can't film any person. No, I hope you're not doing it now. I'm filming it right now. So you need to turn it off and delete that. Now imagine I had video of this actually occurring and a police officer working for the San Jose State University told me to turn off my video and delete it. Always record the police. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. And understand the laws about recording in public. What is your name again? You see it right here. You don't know how to say your last Cobra, name? Cobra Rubius. Okay. I have a YouTube channel. You're going to be on my YouTube. Okay. Thank you.